G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel for some more Forza 7. Now today we're going to be doing a drift build, and this is the very first drift build I've ever done a video on, so I've never really watched anyone else do a drift build either, so this is all pretty new for me. So the car we're going to be building is the S13 Sylvia, uh, so we'll jump straight into our upgrade shop. Now last night I tried to record, record this video and I got through the whole build and tune process and then I got to the end and realised I hadn't started recording. So unfortunately it took me a little bit longer to get this video done than I anticipated. Um, but hopefully this time it will work out and um, we'll have a nice video put together for you. So first thing we're going to do is I normally start from the right hand side and work my way left. So if we go right to the end we have our conversions. Uh, we can do an engine swap if we want to, drive frame swap or a body kit swap. Um, now if you run the wide body kit you do get an option for wider tires and you also, it makes the car more stable because the track of the car is widened so what that means is basically the, the distance between each wheel is wider when you have a wide body kit because the wheels move outwards. Um, we're just going to run with the stock body kit because um, the S13 is a pretty stable car as is, we're just going to leave the stock engine and we want to keep it rear wheel drive. Um, so with our body options, um, I like a nice sleek sort of body kit, so I normally put on the first Origin Lab body kit, because I really don't like the, uh, the sharp pointy edges on the other kit. So we'll chuck that on, most of these parts I'll already own because like I said, I tried to do this video last night and it forgot to record, so uh, we're just going to leave the stocks rear spoiler, and I'm not a big fan of these rear bumpers because they both stick out on quite severe angles, which I don't like the look of, so I'll leave the stock rear bumper on there as well. Um, side skirt, unfortunately this is going to ruin the look of our two-tone. Um, again, don't like those big sharp angles, so we're just going to go with the nice sleek side skirt. Now that we've got our body options done, we move on to our wheels. Now this is a pretty important point when you're building your car. Um, first we want to upgrade our wheels. Now the wheels I normally put on this car are from a rotor. They're just a five spoke with a nice dish to them. They look pretty cool. Uh, here we are. So rim style doesn't matter, it's all personal taste really. But what does matter is your wheel size and your tyre sizes. Now your wheel size will be important because if you go to your maxed out size, what this does is it shrinks the sidewall of your tyre to a very small amount. What this does to the tyre is as it gets on the limit of traction, it breaks away a lot quicker and easier than what a tyre with more sidewall. The so sidewall basically acts as a spring as the wheel loads up, the tyre can move underneath the wheel itself. So if we go to a really big tyre, it's going to be quite stiff and there's not going to be much movement before the tyre breaks away. So I normally recommend, or I don't recommend because I never really recommend anyone, but I normally use about a 17 or an 18 inch rim. And because I have 17 inch rims on my real Sylvia, I normally stick with 17 inch rims in the game as well. Uh, so we put 17s front and rear. Now our next step is tyre width. Tire width is important as well because it's going to affect the balance of the car if you choose to run wider tyres on the rear than the front. Um, because we're building a drift car, we're going to make sure it has enough power to break the rear end loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a wider tyre on the rear and a slightly narrower tyre on the front. So as the car's starting to straighten up, it's going to want to try and grip the rear wheels up and get it going in a straight line again. So the engine will have enough power to break the rear end loose but the tyre grip balance is going to be balanced more towards an understeer sort of car. So our rear tyre width, we're going to run... Uh, sorry, is this, this is front tyre width, sorry. Uh, 225, which is the maximum we can put without the wide body kit. And on the rear, we're going to run a 245, which will give us a nice amount of grip. Um, tyre compound, I normally use either stock compound or street compound. You can use a higher compound if you want, but just be aware that the more grip you have, the more power you're going to need to, to break those rear wheels loose. Um, so we'll run the street compound on here, because we'll get a little bit of pace out of the car. Uh, next we move on to our drive line. 
and I like to keep it pretty simple. I normally run street style upgrades on my cars. Um, just run a sport transmission so I can tune the final drive of the gears. Again, just a street drive line. And differential uh, run a race diff just so we can choose the acceleration and deceleration values in the tuning menu. Now we're onto our platform and handling brakes. I normally just put sport brakes. I haven't really found it necessary to run race brakes and I haven't really found it necessary to be able to tune the balance of the braking either. Um, springs, we need to run race springs so we have full adjustability. Um, Anti-roll bars are not a huge deal, I don't think. We're going to run race roll bars anyway just so we can tune them if we need to. Uh, roll cage, I normally run just a chassis reinforcement and not a full roll cage because it's more representative of like a, a street style drift car. Uh, weight reduction, I'm not going to remove any weight because the car isn't that heavy to begin with. It's under 1200 kilos so we're just going to leave it as stock weight. Now we get to the fun part is our engine power. Now this is really going to depend on the way you um, basically when you're first setting up the car you need to think about what sort of tracks you're going to be building it for. Now I'm building this car for just the average turn sort of tracks like Suzuka or uh, Silverstone or something like that where the corners aren't super massive so we're not going to need a huge amount of power to get this thing sideways and again I like to just use street sort of performance upgrades what you'd see on a on a performance street car so we're going to run pod filter fuel system we're just going to leave stock spark plugs we'll put some quality spark plugs in it exhaust we're going to run the race exhaust just so it's nice and loud cams uh, i can't remember what i put on the build last time uh, let's just say we ran sport cams just so we can get the engine revving a bit higher uh, we're going to skip a few things here because I don't think they're really necessary. We'll go to our turbo, we'll put a race turbo on, give us maximum boost and put a nice big intercooler on it as well. So our build so far has got about 358 kilowatt which is just a bit under 500 horsepower. So we'll put some oil and cooling on it as well. So it bumps us up to 363 kilowatt which is still under 500 horsepower. Um, flywheel, I don't generally worry too much about the flywheel at all. Uh, so that pretty much does the build of the car. So we'll jump into the free play. We're just going to test drive around Suzuka East. If the game hurries up and loads, we'll be right. Okay, first up, our assists. We're going to be running everything off with normal steering. Uh, use normal steering when you're full on drifting because on the wheel simulation steering is just much too difficult at the moment. Um, so normal steering, everything else off. Uh, we're just running cosmetic damage, I don't think it's too important. If you run simulation damage you will feel your tyre um, tires fade off as you're drifting. The more power the car has the quicker the tyres seem to fade. Uh, now if we have another quick look at my wheel options. So steering axis dead zones are 0, 100, Every, all the other dead zones are just at their default values, can't be bothered changing them. Vibration is off, we want this off because when we're drifting, uh, the vibration get, also gives feedback from the rear wheels. So because we're going to be spinning the rear wheels a lot, you don't want to have any vibration feedback coming through the wheel because it's going to interfere with some of our aligning torque feedback. Uh, running full force feedback scale sensitivity and linearity on the default values understeer is all the way to the left which will give us the maximum uh, aligning torque from the mechanical trail um, so with this setting where it is now we're not going to have any real fuel for the tires um, but because we're drifting we don't really need that fuel anyway um, wheel and uh, wheel damper and spring oh, sorry minimum force is just on the default value as well wheel damper and center spring um, you can run these off, I actually have them off because the settings on my wheel um, actually overwrite these settings in the game. So on my wheel I have spring set to off and damper set to off. So these are theoretically at zero. Uh, and we don't want to invert the force feedback and we're not using gamepad steering filters. 
So that's that. We'll jump straight into the test drive. We'll do a quick lap with the stock tune and then we'll start making some adjustments. Find the right gear. Just make sure my pedals are working and my clutch is fluctuating. So let me just quickly restart my pedals and my clutch is going to be a bitch to me today. Oh, here we go. That's better. Okay. So we'll get rid of that telemetry. We'll see how we go. This is just the stock build without any tuning done. As you can see, the car's already a pretty decent drift car. Okay, and we've got our first little mishap. Um, so what I'm going to do there is because the wheel's not really keeping up, I'm just going to adjust my drift mode to the first setting, just so it accelerates the steering wheel a little bit. So now in the transition, I should be able to let the wheel do all the work. That feels much better. a bit of grass okay so it's not really wanting to hold full lock very well so we'll jump into the tuning menu and make some quick adjustments uh, first adjustment we want to do is with our alignment so we want to make the car a little bit more stable during the corners we're going to add a little bit of camber go 2.6 on the front and we'll go about 0.8 on the rear now if you go right extreme with your um with your your rear camber what it's going to do is the contact patch of your tire is actually going to be lifted so you're not going to get as much traction while you're sideways um, i normally run pretty low values on my rear camber just because i like to be able to have as much contact patch on the road as i can so i can get the car going fast even though i'm sideways um, so we're going to run 2.6 degrees negative degrees on the front and one negative degree on the rear and we're, what we're going to do with the rear toe is we're going to toe the wheels in just a slight bit so what this does is it points the front of the rear wheels inwards so it's going to try and keep the rear end of the car more stable so full angle should sort of try and swing the rear of the car back into its center point which should help make it a bit more stable and our caster angle, we're going to increase this because it's also going to help us at high angles because when we're at maximum lock, our front outside wheel is going to be leaned over more. So what that's going to do is have a tendency to try and drag the front end of the car back around so it straightens up. So as long as we have the power, we can hold it sideways, but because we'll have a high caster angle, um, the car's going to be much easier and more predictable to hold it full lock. And if we go past full lock, this is where um, sort of 90 degree entries come into it. If you have a low caster angle, the front wheel tries to dig in more and it's going to prevent the car from the front end of the car from swinging back into line again. So we're going to run a pretty high caster angle, which should help quite a bit. Our springs, we're going to lower the car a little bit. I don't generally run it as low as it goes. Um, I like to have a little bit of movement in the in the springs. So the rear is quite low. It's almost at its lowest point. We want to keep the ride height even, so we're running 11.5 front and rear. Now, because we've lowered the car, we also need to stiffen the suspension. Because if we don't stiffen the suspension, what's going to happen is the car's going to bottom out quite easily. So bump these springs pressures up a bit. And because our car is a front engine, it has more weight on the front wheel, so we want to run the front a little bit stiffer than the rear. So, at a guesswork, I'm just going to go 150 kilos on the front and 140 kilos on the back. There's probably a more mathematical way to set your spring rates, but for me, it, when you're building a drift car, it doesn't really matter too much, as long as it feels good while you're driving it. And our final setting will be our differential we just want to lock this up so locking it up the acceleration is going to try and send even amount of torque to both wheels on the rear 
and under deceleration which is when you're off throttle it's gonna keep both wheels rotating at the same speed and this is going to be handy for a couple of drift techniques that we can use um, so we'll apply these settings and go for a lap two hopefully the clutch doesn't play up too much okay so if we compression lock shift into fourth get the car swaying So you can see there, it's much more predictable at full lock now, it's not trying to spin out. And it's actually trying to pull itself back. Ooh, that transition was a bit sloppy. frame rates seems it's high but I'm getting a lot of um, stuttering as you can see there it went over angle and just waiting for it to come back the front end slowly pulled itself back in line I don't know why my frame rate's so shit at the moment I normally run up around 180 200 when I'm the only car on track stall on the car when we pull the handbrake because our clutch is playing up. That's a problem with my hardware, not the game itself. Bit, gave it a bit too much gas. You know, I'm I'm just sorry, guys. I'm just going to quickly exit the game because this frame rate is really pissing me off. Um, so we will not start a race. We want to test drive. I always do that by mistake. Uh, frame rate's looking a bit better there now. Hopefully, it stays that way. wide oh, hold the handbrake wait for the front to come back alright see if we can get a decent lap in so compression lock fourth gear bit of a dab on the brake handbrake down the third Push the line out a bit wider. Bit of a clutch kick, or oh, just short of 10k. Oh, pushing that full lock. More full lock. Oh, full lock. Right on the lock stop. Full lock. You see the car's really, really stable. Yeah. Pushing the angle. Do one more lap just for fun. This car's feeling pretty good. Again, compression lock fourth, dab the brake down the third. It's a bit better line this time. Should hopefully pick up a few extra points. Oh no, we're going to ruin it. Ooh, it's too busy focusing on the points rather than where I was going. Because we have a, a really good balance of power and grip, we don't have to modulate the throttle too much. We can hold it flat quite a lot. 
and it just is trying to push it to full lock which is quite where we want to be nearly lost it. Alright, one more lap. Then we'll call it a day. See if we can hit the 10,000 points through the first corner. Use fifth gear. A bit more angle this time. Wash off a bit of speed. Hold the inside line through here. So we can push up wide. There we go. Nearly 11,000. Nice angle, bang, full lock. All banged, full lock again. Or oh, that transition threw me right onto full lock through the whole corner. That was beautiful. Oh, a little bit too far. Lucky we've got the car set up to pull back a little bit. still make up a few more points there I had to that, uh, that one spot in that corner where we nearly lost it we still managed 37,000 points for the lap well that's gonna wrap up the video I hope you enjoyed watching it um, just goes to show you how I go about building some of my drift cars um, if you'd like to see more let me know in the comments um, yeah this is the first time I've ever done this so let me know how I went all right um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.